What in the world are you doing starting the barbecue at 8 o'clock in the morning? Well, here we go. We are going to cook a brisket. It's about 8.30 a.m. I put this on, it's actually just a third of a brisket. It's not a whole one. Um, I've got the coals separate over here. I've got a nice block of hickory, thanks to James. And this is our brisket in the marinade. Now this is just nothing more than, I get some Everglades heat, Montreal steak spice, and black pepper. That's all that's on this. Now I'm going to try and regulate the heat at around 275 to 300 for the majority of the day, checking on it periodically. I think it might work. Or I'm buying pizza, one or the other. Let's get it on a grill. Alright, now i got that on the top grill away from the direct heat. I'm just going to let it sit there for a minute. What I'm going to do, I had to get my glasses on. I can't see a dang thing without them. Alright, so there's the brisket third of a brisket on the grill with the fat side up so that when the fat melts it melts into the meat I got my coals over here where am I so I got my coals over here I'm gonna try and regulate the heat around 300 try quite sure what's been going on here in southwestern Ontario for the past four or five days it has been hot I mean hot it's uh, probably 8 15 in the morning it's probably pushing 90 already. I'm not built for this. So after four or five hours of cooking like that, I'm then gonna wrap it in tin foil, put it back on the grill so that, so that the internal temperature is just right. All right, guys, we are two and a half hours in. Been sitting at a steady 300. The only special day is coming up. And there we go. I'm sure you all guessed it by now, but a bit of a disclaimer, I am not a barbecue expert. Truth be told, I've been getting texting advice from James, who's pretty much a master at this sort of thing. I've seen some of his briskets, and I'm just hoping I'm even remotely close. So this is as redneck as you're getting. I got no internal probes, I got nothing, we're just winging it. One piece of advice he did give me, 300's too high. Right now it's pushing about 210, 225. And that's kind of where it's been sitting for the last little while. It's not a full brisket, it's a third of a brisket because I can't eat a whole brisket. What do I do? Feed the neighborhood? There's a thought. Anyway, it's a third of a brisket. So it's been on the it's been on the barbecue for about five hours, smoking with some hickory wood. Alright, after about five hours, I think it's time to wrap this in some foil, because like I said, it's not a whole brisket. Now, James told me that you take it, you wrap it in full hicks, he just said wrap it in a bath towel. I think Jen might have a problem with that, but we're going to stick to just the foil. Then you put it in a cooler, let it sit in the cooler for an hour to two hours. It will continue to cook inside that foil. And the temperature continues to drop because the wood's going out. I'm going to put it back on the grill in the foil and continue to let it heat up in its own goodness. I sure hope this works. All right, guys, we're back inside. It is humid. It's been hot for probably the past four days, about 93 right now. All right, so the brisket's on the barbecue. It's going to stay down there for another maybe two hours at the most. And then we're going to take it off and just let it rest. One of my favorite things to cook with the meat is potatoes, but not just potatoes. Garlic potatoes with garlic butter. Normally, I'd say it's a problem that I'm out of garlic. I was out fishing yesterday. And got a tip from one of the farmers here that I hunt his property. We found some wild garlic. Have a look at this. So all these plants with the white balls on top is wild garlic. We're going to pick some. That ball on the end, that's your clove of garlic. There. 
Nice one there. Now I got two clothes at home. And these three here is all I need. So I'm only gonna take what I need. Funny thing is, it's the creek where I was catching the bass. That garlic grows all down the bank. And it's free. I can't come here and not try and catch a fish. That wouldn't be right. There's a hit right off the bat, dragging it off the bottom. That never gets old. How's that? What do you think of that? So there we have, we got brisket, garlic, painting. That's all I got time for. One bass, about two pounds, not bad. But I gotta get this painting done or I'm in trouble. Got the garlic, wild garlic at that. Can't beat it. Uh, one two pound bass. Now I'm going. That wasn't very nice. Now I'm going to paint the ceiling of the studio, but that's the second coat going on. And I'm gonna go home and eat some brisket after I make the potatoes, the garlic potatoes. See you there. All right, guys, the brisket's done. Back in the kitchen, before I show you the brisket, this is what you want off that garlic stick. The bulb off the bottom, I just cut that off. Your clove is inside there. Got a couple different size ones. You need garlic, you go to a ditch. If you go to a ditch, you might as well catch fish while you're there. All right, time for the brisket. Now, I've been coached all day with this. By James. James has been me. He and I have been texting back and forth all day. I sucked. I am a poor student. So first off, the brisket does taste good. It does not taste great. I overcooked it. It's a little dry. But here we go. All right, guys. Well, this is what we got. I think it tastes pretty good. I'm about to crush up the cloves of garlic, the wild garlic. I'm going to cut up some potatoes. We're going to try them up in the air fryer. Try them up. We're gonna cook them in the air fryer because the brisket's already done. And we don't wanna heat up the oven. So it's just gonna be in the air fryer. Then I'll make the garlic butter and put it on top of them when they're finished. Should be good. All right, guys, well, it's obviously the next day. Uh, we had some company come over last night, and I went, actually, I went to sit down to edit this video today, and I realized there was no outro. Uh, like I said, we had some company come over last night, so I gave them some of the brisket. Uh, I think they all lied to me. They told me it was fantastic. It did taste good. The hickory flavor was good. The taste of the brisket was good. It was just a little dry. Now, I got advice all day long from my pit master slash whiskey buddy, James Kitzel. Um, very good teacher, but he had a poor student. That was me. But I had a good time smoking that. It, it, uh, it was a learning experience. I got another third. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to pay a little more attention to detail as opposed to just throw it on the smoker and hope for the best. But... That's how you learn, right? Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned what not to... That whole video was to tell you what not to do. <laughs> That'll work. All right. See you on the next one. Oh. Uh, subscribe, like, share. Come on, folks. Hit that red button. Let me know that you're here. Leave me a comment. 
I like the comments. I really do. Later.